Our first caller is Mark from New Jersey. Mark, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, so I've been uh, working out uh, and playing competitive sports probably for over 20 years now. And I'm finding that uh, it takes a bit longer to uh, recover. And I'm, I'm looking at different, you know, kind of different uh, schemes, methodologies to, to actually get to the point where I can keep doing what I'm doing without feeling like I did a thousand deadlifts the day after I play a soccer game. Um, so I, I've been looking into one of the things I looked into was uh, Doug Brignoli's um, his workout plan, where it's mostly like it's pure isolation. And I'm just wondering what you guys, I know it's leaving a lot on the table as far as CNS signaling and stuff like that, but I'm wondering what you guys think about that as like a uh, kind of a prehab rehab kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good question. All right. So first and foremost, there are corrective type exercises that are used to connect to certain muscles that you may have issues firing or connecting to. During certain movements, physical therapists use movements like this all the time. They're not traditionally the bodybuilder isolation movements, but they are isolation movements nonetheless. And in that particular application, there's some value. But the goal is not to stay in there, but rather to use those movements as a way to get the person to move better in you know more complex movements because you know everyday life involves lots of complex movements and very little kind of single joint isolation type movements. Now, the guy you're referring to, I'm, I'm familiar with, and in, in his approach is somewhat like this. I go to the doctor and I say, hey doc, um, my knees bother me when I squat. And so the doctor says, oh, don't squat anymore. Or I say, hey doc, my knees, you know, my ankles bother me when I walk a lot. And the doctor says, yeah, yeah, don't walk a lot anymore and, and it'll stop hurting. Now, Part of that's true. You stop doing what's bothering you and you'll start to feel better. But here's the problem with that is you start to lose the ability to do the other stuff and you're not addressing really the root cause. The root cause of a lot of these issues isn't the necessarily the exercise like squats or deadlifts, but rather the improper application or lack of connection, lack of mobility, your inability to stabilize, or maybe your inability to recover because it's too much intensity in combination with all, all the other stuff that you're doing. So Nothing necessarily wrong with this approach, but it's definitely going to result in your in you losing the ability to do what you what you can probably do right now, or just going further down that path. So I don't think isolation movements are key. Complex movements are. You just got to be able to do them right, and you have to address the issues that are preventing you from doing them properly, and then apply them properly. You might just be applying too much intensity in the context of your overall lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I, I'm always I'm always torn with um, with questions like this and and this approach. Like, I don't necessarily disagree with uh, his philosophy on on training because I think there's a majority of people that don't know how to apply intensity correctly. To your point, Sal, and so a safer, easier way to do that is let's just focus on isolation movements and, and it's build. more controlled. It is, and, and it, it's a it's a, a lot easier not to overdo it and hurt yourself because it's an isolation exercise versus something that's like a big compound movement. That being said, I, I think that there's tremendous value in training these compound lifts, but just understanding that where you're at in your life. Like the way I train a compound lift, even today, just at 40, and I'm not 50, right? So. I, I approach it different than when I just did that I did ten years ago. Ten years ago, I was I was so uh, infatuated with how much more weight can I put on my back. Where when I squat today, I I care more about the movement. You know, how does it feel as I go through the squat? And that the, that load could be a hundred plus pounds less than what I was doing just five ten years ago. Now, do I look at it and go, oh my god, I'm so much weaker than I was before? Like, no, it's not like that. Just I have different goals in my life. I'm older. I'm a father now. I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I've already built the best physique I could probably ever build on my body. Like I'm just not at that place in my life anymore. But I and I don't want to lose the skill of being able to squat ass to grass or deadlift good amount of weight. But I but I also don't need to lift the most in in, in the room anymore either. So my approach towards those movements is just different. I just I I, I look at it like the the skill of the movement, and if if it's off at all, or I feel like it's wearing on my body, that's always a great indicator that okay, I'm not addressing mobility in my hips, or oh, I need to work on my ankle mobility more. And I use squatting and deadlifting, overhead pressing these movements as great. In fact, yesterday I was I hadn't done a barbell overhead press in literally maybe a month, 
and I was, it was actually really hard for me to extend my arms all the way over my head. And I was doing a 45, just the bar, you know, mm -hmm. even though I've shoulder pressed 225 over my head, I'm not, I don't care about that right now. What I noticed was, oh, wow, my lats are really tight. I have a hard time fully extending right now. And now it's an indicator for me to go back, use my, my maps prime pro program and address some of my immobility in some of my shoulder and potentially tightness in my lats. And so I use these compound lifts today to be a gauge of improving my movement, not so much how much can I hammer the body. And so that's my one thing I don't like about programs that decide to just dismiss these these movements mm -hmm. that are fundamental. Yeah, and I'll, I want to add something too. In terms of like the isolation movements, it's a great helpful tool for uh, coaches uh, to be able to identify, you know, uh, like a disconnect. So if, if, if there's a muscular disconnect there, if there's a lagging body part, if there's, you know, some kind of a lack of like mind muscle connection, uh, you know, we could sort of microscope zoom in and, and see, you know, how to address that and I think it's a very uh, helpful way to kind of you know bring that back uh, for the overall but uh, if you stay and you live in that type of, of methodology you're going to create more dysfunctions for you like think about the overall patterning of movement uh, and, and how your body is is able to organize itself uh, you know for the overall you're going to have you know issues with that when you come back to you know your sports specifically so this is one thing that really irritates me uh, is when I see you know athletes go into this direction of isolated movements and they come back to perform and there's just so many dysfunctions to to deal with it and address at that point well yeah. there's no there are no isolation isolated movements in no, sport it's, <laughs> it's in any movement compound yeah in any move okay so here's here's the i'll give you an analogy mark just kind of illustrate this comparison this false comparison that certain people will make so let's say um i say okay hitting a nail with a rock is far more effective than using a hammer and you think to yourself like what how is that even possible and then i show you the comparison on the one hand we got a person using a rock to hammer the nail on the other hand we got someone throwing a hammer at a nail across the room well yeah in that case the the rock is going to be more effective if i compare a leg extension to a crappy squat with poor mobility and no connection yeah this the leg extension is gonna be safer and better than a crappy poor connection lack of mobility squat so that that's a false comparison we got to compare good to good, right? Like a, a good, and, and I, I've heard, and I, if I'm not mistaken, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but Doug Brignoli will refer to like isolation movements as being more efficient than compound well, lifts or compound lifts are inefficient, right? Well, it's that there's a lot of load that does not go into the target muscle, yeah. essentially. That's that's not how the body works. And, and I, like, I get what he's saying. Uh, mm -hmm. In a lab, we can measure that but it doesn't translate into the real world. There isn't a single serious lifter in any strength sport or even bodybuilding that's gonna say a leg extension is gonna build your quads more than any, pick your compound lift, lunges, barbell squats, leg press, hack squat, I don't care. No one's gonna, no one's gonna say that, we know that. We know in practice that the compound lifts just, they just are far more effective um, you know, when, when we're comparing apples to apples. But at the end of the day, Mark, what, what you want to look at is, okay, why are these compound lifts hammering my body so much? Why are they making me feel terrible? It's not the lifts, it's how you're performing them. And it's also, it's how you're applying them, what kind of intensity, your form, your technique, and your connection. If you fix those things, you'll get phenomenal results out of those compound lifts. But here's the best part, Mark, the pursuit of fixing those things will also get you amazing results. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you have to wait for a year before you can do a really good squat or really good deadlift. Your pursuit of getting there is going to still get you phenomenal results versus I only do these isolation exercises, in which case you actually slowly lose your ability to do gross motor movements because gross motor movements or movement in general involves muscle. Okay, that's true. Muscles have to contract. But there's skill involved. There's the way the muscles fire and work together. That's why a somebody who lifts a lot of weight in the gym isn't going to feel as strong on the mat as a trained wrestler, right? The, the wrestler is going to have smaller muscles. Each muscle probably contracts with less force individually than a bodybuilder. But man, when they grab you, they know how to apply it. They know how to use leverage. There's a skill involved. And it feels like they're a lot stronger. Anybody who's ever trained in, in mixed martial arts will tell you this. So so that's what you want to focus on. And, and, and there are lots of people in our space who take, what they do is they take this kind of, 
aesthetic minded bodybuilder mentality. They go extreme with it. And then because they're smart, they can articulate it in a very misguided uh, way that sounds kind of smart. So the average person listens and goes, wow, yeah. that kind of makes convincing. sense. And oh, let me look at a picture of the guy. Oh, he's ripped. So maybe yeah. he knows what he's talking about, which uh, I'll tell you right now in my space, <laughs> there's a lot of really ripped looking people that know well, nothing <clears throat> about. I don't fitness. think, I don't think it's just that either. I think it also matters what Mark's specific goals are. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that w with your athletic background that you don't want to lose uh, that ability to do some of those things, or you at least want to keep it as long as you can. And yeah, uh, and, and, indefinitely. Right. So I, so that that's the part I think is the most important of this conversation. Because be be honest, there's nothing wrong. With, I, I used to, I used, ironically, I was more this guy when I was younger, where I used to say, "I'm all show, no go. I just want to look good." No girls ever at, ask me how much I bench when I take my shirt off. Mm. So that was my mindset as a young kid. But it's different now today. Today, I care more about being able to get down, sit down all the way on the ground and play with my son uh, without feeling like my back is on fire, or my knees or my hips are on fire. So different goals in my life. So that matters here, right? And if you are a guy that likes to move and likes to do active things and you want to keep that as long as you can, then I, I definitely would not want you to eliminate certain movements like a, a squat or a deadlift or overhead press. I, but I would, I would, know, I would know this because I've trained many people like you that are at, have an athletic mindset and I know that how you do anything is how you do everything and the one thing I'd probably have to keep reminding you is Mark don't get competitive with yourself here don't try and keep adding weight to the bar get, if you're going to get competitive with anything get competitive with how well you're moving the bar yeah right. pra practice the lifts don't train the lifts like, like think that way like I'm going to go in the gym and I'm going to practice these movements like you would be practicing a throw or a swing to get really good at them. And then I'll use one more analogy, uh, again, just to kind of hammer this home. Imagine if you were in a laboratory and you're, the scientist studying you said, okay, here's what we're going to do. You're not going to walk at all for the next three years. We're not going to allow you to walk at all. However, we're going to train all the muscles involved in walking in isolation. So you're going to do calf raises, leg extensions, leg you know, curls, hip abduction, hip adduction. We're going to work all the muscles in isolation but for three years, you're not going to walk at all. How well do you think you'll walk at the end of that three years? Yeah, it's it's horrible. And also, I guess the the, the if you follow this origin to insertion theory to you know the conclusions that have been drawn, um, you wouldn't lift you wouldn't do overhead lifts, which seems very dysfunctional. Yeah, yeah, yeah again, hundred yeah, percent. There's a lot. Like, look at real world practice. Don't don't forget that pretty much all movement is a skill that can be learned and forgotten. So it's not just as easy as looking at a muscle, yeah. look at it's contraction. It's not just muscle contraction. You know, there's there's more to the story here. And I think a better approach would be to, if if you need a break from compound lifts and really address any kind of imbalance or dysfunction, you know, go for a while doing unilateral training. I was going to ask that, yep. Yeah, focus on that a while. It's really going to highlight a lot of the imbalance and things that will just present itself to you. You'll get better at that. You, you know, spend some time there. You bring it back to bilateral, you know, compound lifts, and you're going to notice a massive difference that being said too i don't and, and to your point justin and mark there is there's nothing wrong with this either it, it this isn't in uh in either or or ours or his it's like there's nothing wrong with you running an, an, an isolated program like this for a small period of time i just sure. mm -hmm. I, I would i would discourage you of getting ri getting rid of compound lists because of one person's philosophy like i definitely don't disagree with Hey, for two or three months, if you want to run all isolation exercises for a while to see how you feel and then to come back to those movements and see, wow, did they get better? Do they get worse? Do I like the way I feel? Do I like the way I look? Do I like what I see happening? Like, I don't see anything wrong with that. I would just discourage any of my clients from completely eliminating these movements in fear of like, oh, there, the movement is what's hurting my back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cycling totally makes sense. Cool. All right. Well, cool. Mark, thanks for calling in. And do you have access to... Maps Prime Pro because I feel like that would help you a lot with regardless of what workout you're doing. Yeah, I went on a, a spending spree over uh, during your Black Friday sale, so oh. I, I picked up uh, Prime Prime Pro, Pro and uh, your RGB bundle. Oh, oh. excellent! Oh, so yeah, yeah you use, up, man. use Prime and Prime Pro. I don't care what workout you're following. You follow Doug. Set or them ours. up in the forum, Doug. And uh, if you're not in our private forum, that's good, Adam. Let's 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 get you in there so we can follow. Okay, along. perfect. All right, thanks, Mark. Awesome, Thank you, Mark. thanks, guys. No problem. Yeah, I, uh, boy, does this. I, it's hard not to get annoyed when I hear stuff like this because <laughs> I know, you kind of hear it in our voices a little bit. Well, you know what the problem. You know, it's 
the problem is I, I, we take very much a lot of pride in what we do right. in helping people. And we know that this message, there's some truth in it, but we also know how people hear it and then what they end up doing with it. Mm-hmm. And it's going to do a huge disservice. There's an old saying in fitness, which is use it or lose it, right? And it's, a, it's this old thing we used to say in the gyms. All the, I mean, in fact, when I was younger, I had no idea what the hell it meant. Well, literally what it means is you stop training something, you stop doing something, you lose the ability to do it. Yeah. That's the bottom line. I mean, again, like the example I gave with not walking for a few years, even if all the muscles stay strong and you can contract them independently, you will lose a significant uh, percentage of your ability to walk and, effectively. And, and that is, it happens faster the older we get. So I, oh, yes. that, the reason why great I, point. it was so crazy, this was literally yesterday. So a great question to address right now, because I was actually kind of blown away by how difficult the overhead press was for me last mm-hmm. night. I mm-hmm. was like, Holy shit. Like it's only been like a month. I yeah. feel like it's like been a month that I didn't do that movement. Yeah. But because I don't do anything else that supports that movement to to be able to extend fully over my head like that, my body starts to prune it way faster today than what it did when yeah. I was in my 20s. And I, he's in his 50s. So if you just decide I'm not going to overhead press or I'm not going to deadlift or I'm not going to squat, it does not take very long before your body says, hey, we don't need to be able no, to do this No, you know skill. why? It's because as you get older, efficiency becomes a much more important survival, uh, survival mechanism. 100%. No, mm-hmm. I, and, I, and I see that. I saw it last night. You know, I constantly get reminded of that. And so this was a great timing for this because I was like, wow, what that is crazy. I mean, I was doing the bar. No, I, yeah. I could I did not go over the bar. And I'm telling you, I was sweating just to yeah. to get the full extension, stabilize, come back down. Yeah. And it blew my mind. Well, this is also I get irritated because you see a lot of like uh, muscle activation type of um, testing, and you can get some cool data from it. But that's not considering the overall. That's not it's it's the same problem I have a lot with with health, where you see practitioners they know one specific area of the body, one system so well, but they don't consider how everything is interconnected. And and this is just another one of those examples from fitness where you need to consider how everything else is interconnected, especially function. Especially a guy like this, because your goal does matter here. If he came on and says, like, Adam, I don't give it. I don't got kids. I don't give a shit about sports. Yeah, I just want to look good. I just want to. I just want to look good. Yeah. And every time I try and work on these squats or try and do these things, I keep running into these issues. You know, maybe that I look at that and go, like, look, if you don't really give a shit about not being able to get down to the ground or not being able to do some of those movements and you literally just want to look good, well, then that's I, I, that's an okay approach to do that. Yeah, you're still going to lose the, 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 the incredibly profound effects of those exercises on changing how your body looks. Fair, fair. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think that's fair, but mm-hmm. I also think that there's there's many ways to skin a cat. And if your desired outcome is just to look a certain way, you can you can achieve that by not doing those movements. But it's like, I don't when you ask people deeper... And they have to say things like, like for example, if you ask me, like, well, Adam, do you care if you, you can't lift something over your head ever again? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, and I, even though I might have said, oh, I just want to look really good. And I think about it, like, well, I don't want to actually not be able to do that. that that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, be honest. No. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.